Hey guys, today we're going to be going over how waivers work in the NHL. Not the video, the actual league. Uh, first, um, let's go over the uh, basics. Like a wave, a players on waivers for like, I think a day or something. Hmm. Um, during that day, any uh, team can claim, can claim that player off waivers. However, there are some exceptions to this rule. The first exception is if it's a conditioning set, if the player is sent down to the AHL or the ECHL, I, I guess that could happen, um, for conditioning after an injury. Very common. Uh, the second way is um, if you're on an entry-level contract, you can't get put on waivers. You can be called up and sent down as much as you want without any waivers. However, once that entry level contract does kick, does end and you're signed, even if it's an extension, once that three year, con, um, you know, once that three years ends, um, waivers do start up. Even if it's a two way contract, you can still be placed on waivers if you get sent down. One-way contract, yes, you can definitely get placed on waivers. Um, let me just look something up real fast. I'm going to try and get more information for you. So, yeah, those are like the two that I can get off my head like right now. Those are the, the two big exceptions. Probably the most common exceptions as well. Um, and the waivers. They were actually introduced in the 2004-5 lockout season. However, the origins go back to the 1950s. Uh, basically in the uh, mid-50s. Then it shot something called the intro league draft. Similar to the expansion draft. Um, this draft allow teams to protect some of their players while they could be drafted by the weaker team while others could be drafted by the weaker teams the idea was to promote a combat the competitive competitive balance of the NHL it was um, a very uh, Robin Hood type thing uh, the that draft le later turned into the waiver draft which existed until the lockout if you want to know a little more about the history, I recommend, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, just that last part about, do you want to know more about the history? Just disregard that. Um, the waivers today, so generally, NHL players who get assigned to the AHL affiliates, uh, or say sent down, they have to pass through waivers. This is, unless the players were waiver exempt, which we've kind of went over that already. The league, once again, made it unnecessary, complicated to be with eh, an exemptions. Uh, basically, this is what happens when a player is placed on waivers. The Every other NHL team gets the possibility to pick up said player, and they can uh, claim, claim the player. Um, uh, from the team who placed them on waivers, you can claim them basically, is what it's saying. If one of the 2000, I mean, with one of the 29 other teams, or however fucking many there are, I think like three different ones now, however, the, if the one of the other 30 teams does enter a claim, they inherit the player with the exact con, with the exact contract and player, and the player's off his old team's books. The waiver claim can cost a team virtually nothing. They don't give up any of their own players or draft picks as they would if they were acquiring from other teams in a play in a trade. If no team claims the player, meaning they like waive their possibility of claiming on them, the player can be officially assigned to the minor league teams. Um, but what happens if two NHL teams want to claim the same player? Uh, the 
interested team with the lower point total gets the player. Basically, the player that's lower, I mean, basically the uh, team that's lowest in the standings gets the player. Um, and they kept that good Robin Hood spirit until the month of November, the point totals from the previous season and decisive and after the current standings count as the tiebreaker. Basically, if, to, if it's before November, the two teams will use the um, points that they had from last season. And then they would, um, after November, then it would be the current season's points. That's basically what that was saying. Um, it's fairly simple. But let me change that part, actually. Um, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. The two factors decided decide if the player is eligible for waivers or not. The age which he signed his NHL contract in the total NHL games he has played since. We find the following graphic in the usage. Here's the NHL CBA. For goalies, uh, the years 18... Uh, basically you have to be uh, years from signing it basically goes down from 6 okay I'm just going to read it off here Okay, 18 is 6 19 is 5 20 is 4 21 is 4 22 is 4 23 is 3 24 is 2 25 or more is uh, yeah that's basically how many years until the player is waiver eligible and the games played have to be 80 if you're 18, 80 through 19, 80 through 20, 60 if you're 21, 60 if you're 22, 60 if you're 23, 60 if you're 24, and 25 plus is, I'm guessing 60 doesn't really have that much. For skaters, it's 5 years. 18 is 5 years, 19 is 4 years, uh, 20 is 3 years, 21 is 3 years, uh, 20... Yeah, 20, 21. Oh, yeah, okay. 22 is 3 years. 23 is 3 years. 24 is 2 years. 25 plus is 1 year. And then the games played for 18. Age 18 is 160. 19 is 160. Age 20 is 160. It goes to 80 games. When you're 21, 22, you get 70 games. Uh, 23 you get 60 games 24 you get 60 games and 25 plus I'm guessing it's 60 games it doesn't really have that much of total and they those games include the total of NHL regular season and NHL playoff games and the league just made that a lot com more complicated basically um Here it is in basic terms, like, like if you're young, then you really have not, not that much to worry about to be waiver exempt. If you're older, however, that once you get, like, increasingly older, or if you increasingly play more games, like, if you're, like, up there in games played, like, you have to worry about that, wa those waivers. Other than that, yeah, that's really all there is, Ent entry-level contract or conditioning loans and all that stuff. Um, and this, um, one and two-way contracts have nothing to do with it. It does, doesn't make a difference on waivers. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you here. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.